talk to me about Sunday night heat. This is the era where we're still doing some pre-show matches on Sunday night heat. It really becomes almost like a pay-per-view pre-show. You're really pushing the pay-per-views. I know that before Sunday night heat was a thing you would have, you know, these like free for all type segments that would go 30 minutes before a pay-per-view, which was really just to help the pay-per-view provider convince you to click the button and, and right. order the show. Does that change at all now that it's a television show on USA? Is it a slippery slope where you're trying to have an entertaining show and sell pay-per-views? Or does USA know, hey, this is good for them. Let them just hard close the pay-per-view. I think the latter. I, I think uh, USA knew what we were trying to do. And all we were trying to do is sell pay-per-views. And to sell pay-per-views, you got to watch the television. So it's pretty simple. It just pieces all fell together in that respect. So, uh, no, I don't, I don't think USA had any problem with it whatsoever. And especially if we got a rating and we had enough people tune in, uh, then we'd be okay. And I think we were okay with that concept by and large, more often than not, it's still always going to be about the quality of the matches and the execution thereof. And, uh, that was our, our goal and then convincing the talents who are not on the ma- the pay-per-view that their role on these pre-shows was very important and we need your best effort and your best performance, et cetera, et cetera. And I think by and large, we got that. The first match here on Sunday night heat is Matt and Jeff Hardy going to a no contest with edge and Christian because the acolytes run in and attack them both. And in the post-match Bradshaw would challenge Mr. Ass on raw the next night for possession of the other tag team title belt. Midian and Viscera are going to beat boss man in a minute and 47 seconds. Midian who came to the ring wearing the European title belt hit boss man with the belt and pins him. Viscera then splashes boss man after the match. He's double teamed until Mark Henry and D'Lo Brown make the save. We get road dog out to do a promo and he does an interview about his King of the ring match with China. China and Hunter Hearst Helmsley come out. China's going to slap dog. And then after triple H distracts him, give him a low blow until X-Pac runs in. Meltzer would say, I can see how inside edition last year found 1,639 crotch chops during a season of raw since (laughs) X-Pac did about 302 on this show alone. As silly as it is, there were organizations out there who were counting the the crotch chops and the number of times suck it was said and things like that. Do you remember there being an edict about, Hey, we got to pull back on the crotch chops or not no, so much. Not so much. As long as it kept getting some pops and long as the people were reacting to it. So what's the problem? And, uh, it just, it was part of the routine, part of the act. And I don't think anybody had any uh, issues with it. Quite frankly, I mean, you could always say, well, there's too many there's too many headlocks or there's too many arm drags or whatever. There's, there's all kinds of reasons and support to the fact that some things are done so repetitively that it seems like there are just too many of them. And we're not showing our true, true creativity because we're, we're d- depending on one element and the element being in this particular example, the cross, the cross chop. So, uh, but I don't think it was too much. The audience still responded. And as long as the audience is responding to some degree, they're reacting, they're paying attention. They know what we're doing in that regard. Uh, we're going to be fine. And I think we were fine by and large to that situation. A guy named after a penis piercing beats a porn star, but thankfully the pimp makes the save. That's what's next here on Sunday night. Heat. they go a minute and 57 seconds, boy, we're probably a little too over the top with some of this at times, Prince Albert's going to pin Val Venus in a minute and 57 seconds. Godfather's going to make the save. My goodness. The creative here, just the names, Val Venus, Prince Albert, the Godfather. I didn't even know what a Prince Albert was Conrad until we got into the deal. I asked what the hell is it? What's the significance of Prince Albert and this big bastard. And of course the answer was, well, here's what a Prince Albert is. And I, I had never thought of it that way. I didn't know what it was. So they didn't uh, do that. No, very often. No, I don't think so. It wasn't part of my FFA uh, initiation in high school. I can tell you that, (laughs) but, but it was uh, interesting to see how it evolved, but you know, at the audience is still popping. They're still 
quote unquote getting it, uh, what, do you, what do you got to complain about? How likely would we be able to, I mean, what are the odds we could talk you into getting a Prince Albert Jr. Uh, slim and none. More of a like me wearing, kind of yeah. Be like me. Uh, you're trying to talk me into wearing burnt orange every day. I ain't going to have me either. So, uh, that's an OU Texas reference to some of you yeah. new, newbies out there. Uh, now both in the vaunted SCC Southeast conference. Well, that's been an exciting transformation. That's created a lot of interest, Oklahoma and Texas and the SEC. What do you think about uh, the earlier this week, as, as you and I are recording this week, it's SEC media days. Right. And we saw Nick Saban at the podium say, Texas ain't running the SEC. What do you think of that? I liked it. He's yeah. a ballsy little bastard. And yeah. he's got, he's got, He's got grapefruits or whatever they used to call them. Cantaloupes, grapefruits, something. Uh, no, I, I, I thought it was pretty cool. He's going to be a good commentator because he's not going to, he doesn't have to hold back. He doesn't have to protect anybody. At least you would think. And, uh, you know, some might say, well, he's going to have to protect the, the Alabama. Okay. So what he was there, what, 17 years. Well, what else would you expect him to be? So, uh, no, I have no problem with that. I. I think Saban brings a, 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 a fresh approach and a nice, uh, a, a nice presentation to the, the SEC football and football in general. I mean, he's a star. Nick Saban is a star in the story. Ken Shamrock is out next here. He's going to beat Shane McMahon by DQ. By the way, Sean Michaels announced earlier in the show that this was going to be Shamrock versus Vince, but Vince wants a suitable replacement, which of course winds up being Shane. Um, Steve Blackman's going to interfere and hit a zillion kendo shots on Ken Shamrock. He's going to start coughing up blood here. And finally, it's time for the pay-per-view. The very first match on the King of the Ring show is X-Pac beating Bob Holly by DQ in three minutes and two seconds, the show gets a, or the match rather gets a dud rating. I don't understand why the, I, I don't understand the finish. I don't understand why we can't have a winner. Uh, Bob Holly and, and X Pac. neither guy would have had a trouble putting the other over. Uh, it would have been more complete, a com more complete match and not as frustrating as it was perceived to be by some of the fans because they didn't understand it either. So, uh, we didn't start off on a good foot there, in my in my opinion. 